destroyer just as in later later in time during the exodus the destroyer appeared in the skies and everything shifted a geological pull shift so if it's at the asteroid belt if it gets that far are you saying that it's big enough where you won't be able to mistake it in the sky stuff you'll be able to see it now why hasn't it done damage every single time it's come through it's a fluke it has its own orbital speed as it goes through and one orbit in the lost book of Enki is called one char with us it's 3600 between 450 to 600 years as it swings through it has a slow enough orbit our orbits are fast as we go around counterclockwise around our Sun so just like Marshall Masters he's put out several videos if you if your listeners have ever gone to his site on YouTube s s special videos okay here's the hot shots okay if we are far enough away from Nibiru when it swings through we might hardly get any damage but if in our orbit if we're near nearer to Nibiru as it's up there by Mars we're going to kick the bleep kicked out of us. Well, I think we would anyways because it would probably pull a lot of crap out of that asteroid belt. It probably does. Uh, it probably has done some damage. Uh, the account back in uh, the ex back during the Exodus was fairly bad as it was. All of uh, ancient Egypt was basically flooded. Uh, the Aztecs, they ran for the, the, the high hills, and only the ones that were up in the high mountains survived. Who knows what it did around the rest of the planet? It, it, you know, every, uh, Solon, ancient Solon, the Greek philosopher, he went and talked to the ancient Egyptian priests, and they told him that this stuff had happened many times in their ancient history, but each time it wipes out most of the humans and they're all put back to zero because they have to learn how to read and write again and only the ancient Egyptians had enough knowledge and ways of keeping that knowledge that they stayed above everyone else so okay yeah this all this stuff's been happening and uh, the the accounts from Ippor and from the uh, the Colbrin are very clear what has happened now we jump to about ooh, 1983 somewhere uh, just past that by 87 they're building the deep underground military bases the dumbs over in Norway and one of the chief engineers and I sent you the stuff from this and oh, anyone yeah. else can find it or they can contact me and I'll, I'll, I'll send it to him myself they're building these giant dumbs underground and they have enough dumbs to have all of the elite Norwegian people safe and they built them all because Nibiru was coming very clear that's also why has anyone ever heard of the doomsday seed vault oh, 60 yeah. minutes did a yeah 60 minutes did a nice thing on it years ago up there in Smallvard Norway every seed for every plant food and not is being stored there in a massive seed vault it's it's my understanding that there's actually two of them um, one on are, each side of the globe there are more than that I'm sorry Michael oh you're probably right would okay if I know of two there's probably 15 <laughs> and, th and that's because after Eisenhower talked to the Anunnaki I'm quite sure he went digging through ancient history and he found all these accounts okay so they knew that when Nibiru was in the sky everything that grew on vine orchards or anything was burnt to a crisp and according to Ippower very clearly at the end of his account it's in the Colbrin only. He talks about 
he wished that the Egyptians had been nicer to the he calls them Kebrews K-E-B-R-E-W-S okay so it was the Hebrews that were leaving and it was the Exodus and he also says that after the destroyer left a global uh, shift had happened because all of their uh, uh, growing seasons were thrown out the window that's happening now as a matter of fact Growing. Well, not really, but we're getting close. Yeah. I mean, he says it was immediate, okay? He says the stars move to new positions in the sky. The sun and the moon set and rose in new positions. that had, They'd never done that before. And that's exactly what Solon had told, ha, had found out from the ancient Egyptian priests that that had happened several times. Now, uh, the, Chinese, the Chinese mentioned that in the uh, Emperor Yahoo account. Now, and uh, Mosai of China in Book 5 also mentions it again. So, yes, we have these dumbs all around the planet. Oh, well, we do, we do. Uh, but let me ask you this quickly. Uh, how do we know that they were, I mean, obviously they were describing what they were seeing. Um, so that's a given. It happened. But how do we know that they weren't just, you know, it happened then and it won't happen again? How, they I, don't. We, Ex except if you look, if you go to an, any astronomical program and you look down at the rotation of our planets, the Earth is rotating counterclockwise towards where Nibiru will be swinging up. Now, yes, Nibiru doesn't come any closer than between Mars and Jupiter, but there will be extreme gravitational and magnetic effects because of it. That's why they built all these things deep underground so the elite, just like in the movie 2012, with their arcs, they'll all run underground. And they supposedly will survive down there for several months and supposedly the idea is that if there are any survivors they will start rioting amongst themselves and they'll kill almost all of themselves amongst that do it they're during that and any survivors once they come up will be put into FEMA camps now how many of your listeners have known before 2013 about all the massive amounts of ammunition that every agency of the US government was buying up now my listeners are well aware of it but unfortunately there's a lot who don't listen to shows like this and they have no clue they think it's just a conspiracy theory but it's very real I followed it as much as I could there were huge trains of automobile carrying cars that were all made up to be prison cars and they were being kept silent very quiet about it but cer certain people were leaking information about it a person that used to uh, uh, go on to YouTube is called call me just call me kit no one's heard about no one's heard anything from her since 2012 she was on another radio show, which I don't know if you want me to mention it or not. Oh, go right ahead. She was on Orion Talk Radio back in 2012, and I have a copy of the show. See, my wife and I have really been researching this for a long time. And she was talking about all the contracts that the U.S. government was putting out to quietly and quickly pull everything away from each of the three coastlines we have and that the US government was building four enormous food stations right in the middle of our country and I forgot the states it's four states and the United States was broken down into A, B, C and D and each one of these food things would eventually put some supplies out to those states that were mentioned. Probably Colorado and is one of them. Probably. And after that show, 
no one's heard from her since. Do I know anything happened to her? No. She might just be staying underground and keeping her mouth quiet. On YouTube, she only made three videos. And they're, they're still there. She's never pulled them. Her account hasn't been pulled. Okay, let's go to the remote viewing type people, like Dr. Courtney Brown. Yeah. He came out with a remote viewing study between 2008 and 2013. Now, he will very quickly kick me in the butt for not mentioning that there are a tremendous amount of time miles right up to the mountains of Kilimanjaro, if I remember correctly. Well, I know South Carolina used to be under the water because it's, it's all sand. But he also did mention that Washington, D.C. had been heavily destroyed, and they were seeing, or the people in these uh, studies were writing down that all there was was, sh was shambles of homes for people to try and put together to live in uh, after all this stuff had happened. Okay. All of the predictions and prophecies told by almost everyone for over t almost over 2,000 years all died as of December 21st, 2012. The Aztec calendar, nothing happened this time. All the predictions and pro and, oh God, I, I don't know how many of those I've, re I've gone through and have read about massive water waves coming in doing this and that. It's all stopped. It all fell flat. Dr. Courtney Brown's study ended as of June 1st of 2013 when all of this stuff should have happened but it didn't happen during this timeline I'm going to safely say that it didn't happen during this timeline all the scientists have been saying for years that we were going to have massive solar storms in late 2012 the sun's been very quiet it has. And, and, you know, and, do you know, and do you know why? The ETs have intervened. Now, how do I know that? Yeah, how do you know that? <laughs> you see, I found out accidentally during my research, my friend said, hey, if you're going to research Nibiru, there has to be alien ships coming here. And I think these are them. And they, they, started, giving, they started sending me the satellite camera images from SOHO, the Solar Observatory, uh, uh, Stereo Behind, Stereo Ahead, uh, the U.S. Navy's uh, satellite system called SECHI, S-E-C-C-H-I. And these things had un unbelievable looking things on them. What were these images that were being seen by these cameras. Now the SOHO satellite is four times the distance of the Earth out in space away from the Earth. It's in a Lagrange point and always looks at the Sun. The first images I got from there were 1998 and here's this I, nothing more than a classic flying saucer was heading straight towards the cameras and it barely missed it. And then I started seeing these other huge images. I just couldn't make them out. And they, they were just massive looking things. And I had a friend, my wife and I had a friend who said he was a photo analyst. And he worked down here in California at Moffett Field. Well, there's nothing around Moffett Field except for NASA. He never gave me his name, and he wanted to look at some of the images. And this big image that's very clear reminded me of someone else. Over in the what's now Iran used to be the the Zoroastrian religion, and several thousand years ago they started carving this massive wall carving and they called it the Ahura Mazda. And anyone who's ever looked at these wall carvings, 
It's A U H hyphen M A Z D A. Ahura Mazda. Anyone that looks at these things clearly sees outstretched bird's wings, but there's one problem. There's landing gear coming down from the image. You can see metal rods, or what looks to be metal rods, with round wheels on the end. And there's a Anunnaki god standing right in front of him. And they clearly say it's an Anunnaki god. His name is Ahura Mazda. In 2005, one of the very excellent cameras on Soho called the EIT-304. It's an ultra-extreme uh, infrared camera. It clearly caught something coming down the left-hand side of our sun. And this image was trailing what I call drive plasma, or exhaust smoke from your car. I had to research the holy heck out of these images because people have called me this, this, and that on Facebook. And then when I finally got in with, uh, hope I hope I can mention this this other. You listen. Uh, you're you're welcome to mention anything you want on this show. We never censor our guests. Uh, okay, go for uh, it. They're called third phase of the moon. They contacted me directly and said, hey, uh, how about doing a short video for us? And I said, no problem. So I sent them the images and third phase of the moon under Bob Evans or Robert Evans. You'll see two videos on YouTube, one showing these images, showing these massive things coming into our system. The other one shows these other interesting things NASA does not want you to know about. The ETs placed, and this is ETs, not us, massive space probes all around our sun. They've been there for over seven years. My opinion is that these space probes are controlling our sun's output. You see, very few people know that our system is electrically charged. There is a wormhole, if you can call it that, that goes out from the sun to each one of the planets and then from the planets to each one of the moons. This wormhole, it's the, the, the energy that's in our system is at a certain rate. Now controlling like, like our... 12 volts or you know how many amps, God knows what. So this nemesis system has a different electrical rate. So each time it interacts with our sun, and every time Nibiru, as it comes through, it interacts with our sun, each one of the planets, it causes just holy heck here on Earth. Because the sun controls not only earthquakes, but tectonic plates on our Earth. So all the stuff that was being told by Ippower back in 1558 probably was because of this interaction between our sun and the brown dwarf Nibiru and our sun. That's a pretty tall order now to be able to actually control the sun, isn't it? If, we're, if you were that advanced, I don't think so. But ever since those things had been seen around our sun, we started having problems and now, is this the interaction between all this stuff? I don't know. Other people say yes. We've had mass animal die-offs that can that continue around the planet. They went all around from all around the world. Mass animal die-offs, this and that, even things under deep underwater, all the way to everything that flies and everything that crawls on the, crawls or walks on the planet. Uh, we've had a higher than normal volcanic activity rate going on around the planet. We've had different volcanoes. Here in the United States, the Long Valley caldera down uh, near Los Angeles has been really ticking up with the tremors lately. Tremors around uh, uh, Yellowstone? Uh, no, uh, 
my mind's going blank right now. Uh, Let's just uh, say the, some the, big the, volcanoes. The, the, the big <laughs> park from up in Montana. What's that big park? Ah. Oh yeah, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Yellowstone's on top of a massive caldera, which has exploded at least three times over the last two point something billion years. It's ticking and has been ticking for a long time. Getting a lot, the ground has actually been rising in part of Yellowstone, and the roads, you know, the regular road you drive on, has actually been almost melted because of the underground heat. Um, different other volcanoes around the Earth, up in Iceland, over in uh, the Kamchatka Chemk- uh, Chemk- uh, Peninsula, over there in Russia. So we have the highest volcanic rate right now. Other, either they're rumbling or they've already erupted. Yeah. Uh, tectonic plate problems. That's, that, that's all. That's all part of the uh, earthquake type stuff. But let's, let's hold off there on tectonic plates. We'll come back and and we'll pick back up there. We do need to take a break. Uh, yes. At least one more here. And I want to give a shout out to High Point Radio who has notified me that this show has been going over live. They usually uh, take it after the fact. And tonight we are being broadcast live um, across New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania from High Point Radio, the top of New Jersey. So uh, hello to all of you who are listening. Uh, Now that you're hearing it live, you may just want to get addicted to us now because, Robert, we're back. We were talking Titanic, or, yeah, the plates. <laughs> We're, yes. Go ahead. Okay, so you know all that stuff is slowly happening, and who knows exactly what is actually causing it? Is it this stuff happening, or is it something else happening? Um, I'm in there with. I'm. I'm right. I'm. I'm sitting right there with Zachariah Sitchin on this stuff. It is Nemesis. Uh, one of the programs I have. Is called um, Astro Viewer. Like I've, we've gone over this before, if this one program has the information it does, then this information has been out quietly and no one else has known about it. Plus, we have not seen one major storm on the sun since 2012. This should be an extremely powerful time because the sun, this is supposed to be the sun's hot time. And it hasn't happened. And I, I looked, I'd look at each one of the dots. I've been researching, pointing directly towards these things that are all around our sun. And that's, and everything else I've researched in understanding how our system supposedly works, that points directly, in my opinion, to what the ETs are trying to have intervened and are trying to not happen. All right. And okay, Robert, we, so, we, you know, the, the Vatican is known about this, too. Uh, there was a most recent thing from the Vatican. Our former Pope, uh, let's see, what was his name? Pope Benedict. He got on a German radio station a while back and he's just riling and everything about the Catholic world and he claimed that a group of Jesuits had infiltrated the Vatican and were pursuing what he called an alien agenda. Well, that's true. <laughs> I think that's so, true. So, yeah, exactly. So here is Pope Benedict complaining about these Jesuits and the only other Jesuit account came directly from Christopher Barbato, from the high-ranking Jesuit priest that came down and met with him and told him all of this stuff uh, that's in these transcripts from uh, the return of Pl- return of Planet X with Chris with uh, Lucas Cantemberlo. So now you have this thing. Here's this Pope. He's not the weird people off, well, maybe he is the weird people off, but he's not the weird people off the street just saying anything and everyone just, ah, 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 he's a weird guy. Here's the Pope mentioning the same things I've been talking about. Okay? Okay. So we've got that. 
We've got the possibility that if things are slowly ramping up. I've got friends on Facebook, uh, Don Hull, D-A-W-N Hull, H-U-L-L, and her friend Denise Chavez. They've been digging up all kinds of photographs that they're taking. And, you know, this isn't my first night actually trying to do this. I've been on two of Third Phase of Moon shows. I got on with uh, Dr. Elias, John Elias, down in Southern California. He's part of he's part of the uh, Third Phase of Moon, and also he's a broadcaster. Well, Robert, and, let me just say you're doing a fine job here tonight, and um, you know there's so much that uh, obviously it's, there's yeah, it's it's almost impossible to put it all in order and and cover everything. We do have a call. Uh, we sure. have Ira. Welcome aboard, Ira. You got a question for Robert? Hello, gentlemen. Yeah, I've got yeah. actually two. Um, first off, someone in the chat room asked, uh, made this statement, and I kind of wanted to bring this up. Uh, the reason why the sun might be having less of a uh, potent impact than it uh, than it is right now. Just recently, we had the uh, incidents where it looked like there were ships or something that were actually sucking energy off of the sun. Could that be related? Partially. And I know what it is. In another work that I have I have and have been starting to share around, it's a cold dwarf. Okay? NASA knows about this. So we actually have a cold dwarf that's somewhere near our sun. And several times NASA has actually caught it draining tendrils of energy away from our sun. Well, if I could uh, intervene really quick, um, I actually seen an article from NASA, oh, this was about three or four, maybe five years ago, where they actually admitted that they had found a brown dwarf behind our sun, and, you know, and everybody acted, well, the skeptics acted like I was crazy, but I remember, I, I have the article, it's, it's in one of my files. I remember well, that article as well. Well, the, the brown dwarf... That is Nibiru. Uh, the brown dwarf is Nemesis. That, that's the one that actually has its own system with the seven planets. The cold dwarf is a black dwarf. And it's hardly ever seen. Uh, several times over the years, uh, NASA has actually seen it zip through our system or do something. And then there was uh, several images where there were... Uh, CMEs coming off the sun and they were just washing right over it. So you could see this black thing with these clouds of gas and everything f flowing right over and around it saying, what the heck was that? So that's what I, what's, that's what I know. Very interesting. I like that thought. One other, uh, I guess, sort of maybe correlation question for you. When you were speaking about Mose, I, I've, I've read some of that stuff as well before myself, and one thing that I thought was interesting correlation-wise is uh, the timing of things. The the person Mosai could equal Moses, and the five books could equal the first five books of the Bible that were supposedly written by Moses. Perhaps there's a correlation or a tie-in between the two there, as well as the Akmos incident or uh, idea from Egypt as well, that this one person kind of is maybe either the same person interacting with everything or that there's like the same idea that keeps getting passed on to people as a cycle or like uh, your classic hero story that he's like this classic hero that people have in their mind like an archetype. I'll go ahead and let you go. I just wanted to get those questions in. Thank you so much for all the info tonight. All sure. right. Thank you, Ira. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of exactly where I was now. Uh, so the gentleman that was just on there, that's a possibility. Uh, everything I've been told from different people I've talked to, Enki was actually uh, the Ahura Mazda with the Zoroastrian religion. And that's why him and his ship are actually carved on these different things showing him. Uh, okay. When I did the show down with Dr. Elias, Dr. Elias handed me over to Ivy West. 
she has a radio show over in Hawaii called uh, something something on the uh, something on the wind right now. Sorry, Ivy, but uh, <laughs> I, got, I was on a couple of her shows, and then she passed me off to um, another friend, and my mind is starting to go blank. I'm going to get my butt kicked here somewhere. Uh, yeah, well, these things Fenton, happen. Lo, <laughs> uh, lo, Lorian Fenton. She's one of the uh, uh, MUFON directors here in Petaluma, California. And she liked what she saw, and she had me speak at UFOCon 213 uh, here in San Jose. So I actually, for the first time, was able to put all the stuff in front of everyone and get them to see some of this stuff. I've had a lot more research since then, so I'm more I've been on several more shows and, and honored to be on your show tonight. No, I'm as much to as have I can you. tell, this stuff is real. It is real. Uh, the ships that are seen flying into our system, some of these ships are actually caught as they come out of what I call warp. There's a massive flash, and zoom, here's this massive thing coming right out of this big T type thing. Uh, some of those images are on my webpage. Now, some of the guys at MUFON said, no, 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 you're getting this all wrong, Bob. That's actually uh, cosmic ray splashes and cosmic ray this and cosmic ray that. And I went right back to NASA and I went through everything they had. Not only would the images be all just inhibited by little tiny white dots but you wouldn't even be able to see the images and the images I have are perfectly clean there's no cosmic ray anything SOHO the engineers have been working since 1998 to fix every single glitch that they had found in the images and in the camera systems and they fixed every glitch going from two, from 1998 to 2012. And these images are still being seen. Yeah. And these ships are being seen firing their main weapons at stuff. Now that I can, I can say, I've seen that. I've seen convincing. I mean, I wasn't there. I wasn't up there in the ship, so I don't know. But I have seen pretty convincing video of that where these... These big ships are up there, and they are. They're shooting at each other. And I mean, no. Uh, well, I'm uh, sorry. I don't mean to step on you there. I don't think they're shooting at each other. They might be. Maybe that's the original Star Wars idea that Reagan had, because he he should have known about this stuff. But they're, they're, the beams coming out of them, they're hitting things that cannot be registered by our cameras. So either they have a a cloaking device around them. Maybe they are another ship, or maybe they're just asteroids and space stuff that should have hit the Earth by now. See, Dr. Courtney Brown and his stuff, they said we should have been hit by all these massive things. And only one thing got in close, and that was that one that exploded over Russia a while back. And all and too many people with the looking at the images actually saw some kind of a UFO firing at it. Okay. I, I've watched the video uh, of that and it was pretty pretty fascinating video, but you know, and I tried to see, I, I've seen where people said, look, there's a UFO that come in and blew it up, but I, I'm not saying it's not there. Just because you don't see it don't mean it isn't there, but I haven't seen that. Well, you know, w w when you follow the dots like I have, either accidentally or intentionally that's the ETs they're intervening uh, they don't up. they don't want the advanced humans that are now here to be lost because of their own planet's work then I wish those who are in communication with these ETs would tell them about Fukushima and to ask them if they could like airborne that and just take it off the planet for us that would be rough. well. There's there's a lot of people that are talking about that. There that we're actually going to be going into a new cycle 
of a, a higher resonance type things. Uh, people that have that say they have contact with aliens, uh, and this is what led me in with uh, Dr. Uh, Sasha Lesson and with his wife Janet Lesson. I've been on their show many times now, and that's actually been dragging out all the all the things with the Anunnaki. Some of their their guests were just fantastic. They knew all the, the stuff I had no way of knowing. And it started filling in the holes here and there. And then I heard your show. Uh, uh, one of my friends uh, pointed me right to your show with uh, Bob Fletcher. And his information was just fantastic. I had some stuff that he didn't know about. And he had a whole hell of a lot of stuff I didn't know about. So everything tells me that yes this is still going on uh, a military friend of mine which I'd shown these images to a while back can't tell you what what rank or what whatever he had the images looked at and they put them under some kind of a, uh, some kind of a scope or something and they looked at the ones that were actually firing their main weapons and the main weapon According to him, it went right off the scale. They they, they they couldn't tell me how what how much power they were actually seeing in it. There's a certain type of stuff that they, they do with they during two thousand twelve, almost two thousand thirteen, he bugged out and disappeared with his wife and family. He came back here a little while ago and he said, uh, you still got that stuff? I said, Yes. You still talking about it? Yes. He said very carefully, well, everything was put off for about a year or two, and it's still happening. That's all he would tell me. And that's basically what we're hearing from a lot of people now that are talking about this, that Nibiru probably won't be seen, just like what Bob Fletcher mentioned probably on your show. It probably won't be here until about uh, 250, uh, 217, 2017, something like that. So there's enough people that are hearing the different stuff through the trade winds or through the grapevine that know that the stuff is still going to happen. So now, what do we say to all the people beforehand who claimed that they had Navy intelligence and that it was coming in 2012 and? It, it was going to come in 2003. One woman said she was in contact with the ETs, and and you know, and I'm not. I'm with you. I believe there's something up there. I believe that there, there's it's real. There's there's enough evidence to point towards this. At least happened in the past. So I, you know, I'm not going to just brush it off. But what what does upset me are those people who've coming on uh, years ago, and they've they've you know keep giving times, oh, it's going to be here in 2003, it's going to be here in 2006, it's, and it never happens, and it always gets pushed off, um, and I, I, like I was telling you off air, I think that that's purposely done to discredit it all. That's a good possibility. All the indications I found during my research all pointed around 2012-2013. Now, I've been reading so many different things, I can't even tell you how much I've had to read during this time, and you know, watching other videos that have basically been given an answer for some stuff you just mentioned. Uh, another person on YouTube is uh, Captain, uh, what, Captain Mike and Mithy. Mithy, it's uh, Atlantic OBR on YouTube. I've been following his work for years now, and his, his stuff is pretty interesting, and he's actually touched right on a lot of stuff that I've been hearing from other space, other parts. He also touched on some work that was done by a seer, you know, a person that does seances and stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. This person actually created several images and it was all from interdimensional context. Believe it or not, interdimensional context. Now, I sent you those images. I think they were floating around on your, your uh, chat room tonight. 
those images clearly show two systems interacting. The person called a binary system. Well, a brown dwarf doesn't doesn't count as a binary. It counts only as a companion, companion brown dwarf to our sun, and it clearly shows so many plants orbiting around. And one of the, I, th I think I sent you four images. Three of them that show the plants in different locations around as they ro rotate around, and one that shows the two of them separately. Yeah, the separate but... one shows I think almost seven planets which is exactly what I'm told is in the Nemesis system. It matches up with the leaked information from 2009 showing the six planets part of the, uh, the Nemesis system, which matches up with the DSS image black and white showing five plants orbiting around nothing. Uh, which also matches up with the the uh, Astro Viewer images showing Sedna orbiting around a huge orbit with uh, our system down at the bottom, closer towards the the bottom part of the orbit, just as what was seen in Nemesis. Uh, the, uh, w w with our sun. Uh, there was a TV show a while back talking about that. I'm trying to remember the, the exact name for it now. Hold on a second. So, you know, I'm not making this stuff up. Other people have said this is exactly how a brown dwarf would have a much larger system than our system because they were able to float out further and further away. But because of the orbit of the brown dwarf around our system, it keeps out that far. And this is exactly how it would be. Is you know uh, the images from Soho and stuff. I don't have the knowledge to even try to Photoshop those things, but they were Photoshopped. I mean, they were not Photoshopped. They're all very clear. Okay. Um, let's see if I can snag it up real fast. That way I know exactly. I can tell you your people exactly which one to look for. Uh, I've had, I don't have any PhDs, okay? That's why I like you. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the only thing I have is, is the completion of a reserve officer's training class. All of this other stuff is the road of hard knocks. I've had to go out there and physically research this stuff, go through God knows how many uh, websites on the Internet, do this, do that, accidentally jump in with this other group because it was part of this and they talked about it and I got images from them. Um, just one thing after the other. All of my research, see, I, I don't get paid for any of this, just like you and your radio show here. I don't get paid for any of this stuff. I don't have any type of title coming towards me for doing this. I've actually lost two desktop computers and 15 laptop hard drives because of virus attacks that tried to knock me off the air. I've had to burn everything very quickly. So I have everything all this time. These images are real. <clears throat> Just as Robert uh, Fletcher said during his show here, this stuff is real. So whether the people want to understand it or believe it, it's entirely up to them. Some people want to go home, you know, get to dinner, have something to drink, go to bed. They don't want to worry about everything else. Well, they want to watch Dancing with the Stars and, you know, get on and play Candy Crush and all that good stuff. Exactly. But when something happens, they're the first ones to say, how come we never were told about this stuff? You know, how come we weren't told about these massive ships coming into our system using warp drive or wormholes? And by the way, these ships are about the size of our planet. Or some man in a rope tells them, well, don't, don't be alarmed, they're just fallen angels. Exactly. <laughs> or, you know, some religion says this, some religion says that, predictions here, prophecies there. Nostradamus even talked about this stuff. And the best prophet I can think of is the one that's always laughed at. 
Mother Shipton. Mother Shipton had a tremendous amount of prophecies, but during her stuff, she talked about, and as it, we came to the end of the century, all this other stuff would happen. Now, anyone who's ever read anything about pole shifts or tectonic this, tectonic that, knew she was talking about a, geo a geographical pole shift, where plate plates under the oceans were pushed up and the humans were now living where ocean water used to be. But she also mentions at one point that and Nibiru personally with microwaves. So all of those, I have, I don't know how many images, which just shows, if, if I, you can look at these images either two ways. One, it's just full of space garbage which suddenly blows away. Or two, the alien races or race that has all these things has put them all there for two reasons. One, hey humans, take a look at us. We're here, we're all friendly. Or, humans, we're ticked off. Either knock off what you're doing, or here's what we're showing that we have to go after you. I don't know which one is what for these. Because these images, they clearly show what NASA describes as anomalies slash UFOs. And you have those pictures on your website? No. Uh, I have only 20 of over 3,000 images on my website. I will be putting these images up on my website. I will send you some of these images. That way you can uh, show them in your chat room Thank to you. other people that want, want to see the stuff. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I love to put the pictures up. I like people to be able to uh, follow what we're talking about. So, uh, thank yeah. you. And these are all perfectly clear. There's no, there's no, no, nothing in the problem with the images except for showing the anomaly. So it's not cosmic this, it's not cosmic that. Cosmic rays only hit sometimes one camera, but not two. They can't hit two cameras. And in that one set of images, I've got one two cameras showing the same images. Well, you know, they did uh, announce not long ago that they did find that there was, like, I guess another uh, system of planets with its, with a sun, maybe even. I don't think they've seen the sun or found the sun, but they believe it's there. Uh, just outside of our solar system, they said just beyond uh, Pluto. That they and, that's, and that's where Nemesis is. Oh, so that's our Nemesis. Now, why would they that's, even tell us about that? I mean, aren't they afraid we're going to start trying to, uh, I don't know, we can't zoom the powers, in. The powers that be think we're all stupid idiots, that we haven't learned anything from what they wanted us to learn. Okay? Uh, here's another person, Colonel Philip Corso. He had a book years ago called uh, The Day After Roswell. He, in that book, tells of how he worked at the Pentagon with alien technology or foreign technology and how he used the stuff which they had gotten from the wrecks outside of Roswell and placed them with different companies to have them build infrared technology, uh, fiber optics, this and that, and this and that. And they found out that the Russians were also using some of the same technology, either directly from us or from ships that had crashed over there in Russia. So it was a big game between the Russian and the Russians and us. You see, one of the craft that crashed near Roswell, these were all brought down by the early Doppler radar systems. One of the craft that they went in, they, they checked. See, the three craft we have were given to the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. And each military group did their own in private investigations and no one shared anything. The craft showed that the ETs weren't didn't have any type of waste disposal, didn't have any food preparation or storage, 
and there was no controls for them to actually fly the craft. They found out later that they had this harmonic type of a ring around their heads. So they were using their brains to control the ships. These ships were just like a shuttlecraft from a much larger mothership. So they knew that, and that's where the movie uh, Firefox came out years ago. Remember with, uh, what was this? Uh, that was about that Russian fighter where the pilot could think to make it do anything and everything. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I didn't see the movie, but I saw clips from it. That's where that idea came from. Well, somebody okay. had told me once, uh, I forget who it was, someone who was supposed to have knowledge and said that they control these crafts with their minds. Yes. Uh, the Russians have been working on the same type of stuff for their fighter pilots, just like we have been doing the same thing. Uh, okay, here's Hollywood's leaks for you. The uh, movie uh, Independence Day, ID4. You not only find out about the president being taken out of the loop forever hearing about Area 51 or the alien stuff, okay? And here come the aliens and do all their nice stuff, and that one guy, he has to kick their butts and take care of it. The next movie was Deep Impact, and that was supposed to be where that asteroid was coming in and that uh, TV announcer accidentally stumbles into it, and it was called, uh, uh, there was a name for it, and, he, and she finds out accidentally that the president had been hiding money because they were building these deep underground military bases, which could only take only about 2,000 people from each, and each country was building their own. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got uh, Battle L.A., and that's with the United States uh, Marine Corps. They were worried about stuff coming into our system like asteroids. Well, you know, you think back to Elenin, the comet Elenin that was supposed to have come through a little while back. We started doing research on that one, and NASA wasn't doing any of the close-up images. They were leaving it all to amateur astronomers. So as, as Elenin got closer and closer, it started looking weirder and weirder. Then the Russians came out with an article saying that Elenin wasn't a comet at all, and it was in direct communications with a Jupiter-sized planet that was following behind it. Okay, does that give you any idea here? So we started checking into the, uh, the photographs even further, and they started looking even weirder and weirder. Then the Chinese came out with an article saying that there were UFOs piggybacking on this Jupiter on, on Elenin. So we just jumped right in there and enlarged those images up. And guess what? Elenin had a huge sack on its back and that sack had all kinds of huge things in it. And the sack was actually protected by some kind of a electronic field or electrical field. And I have the images to show it. And as it, as it was coming in closer and closer to the, the ecliptic of our system, everyone was saying it was supposed to explode because the energy difference between in our system and what, where it was coming from. But it didn't. At some point, all the stuff that was on the back shifted to both the left flank and right flank and was clearly being picked up by astronomers down in Australia. Yeah, and I'll, as tell, you, dust. Uh, I'll tell you something else. Bob Fletcher, um, the guest I had on the show uh, last week, he has some fascinating pictures on his website of these underground bases. And they, I, they're not, I wouldn't even call them underground bases. They're underground cities. They, yes. Yeah, they're, they're entire cities. And, and these things are real. 
Yes, I, I know they are real. I've, I've seen plenty enough uh, the stuff from the Norwegian uh, person that turned politician uh, to all the other stuff. They're real. Uh, several years ago, a lot of the uh, caves that were being that were under the United States control here in the United, here in the United States were all being blocked up so people couldn't go into them. Uh, they, they said, well, we just have to keep you from keep going in there. Uh, and that's been mentioned many other times. The ammunition, the guns, the stuff that was being bought up in massive amounts that are probably still being bought up. It's all meant for the survivors. And then suddenly all the predictions fell flat right in their faces about what this is all supposed to be doing. I'm quite sure a lot of your listeners know about the Georgia Guidestones. Oh yeah, they're not that far away from me either. I'm I'm in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm away, uh, probably I don't know three three hours away from them. Well, the Georgia Guidestones maybe. talked very clearly about a massive depopulation, which fits in with everything I've been telling you and your listeners tonight. Yeah, you tell me how those big ass stones get put in place and nobody knows where they came from. Come on. And in text, all around, all of, all of them, in every known language, are put a basic Ten Commandments. Except for and, ja except for Japanese, right? Isn't Japanese missing? They're they're all there. Japanese. As far as, as far as I understand, they're all there. Every known language here on the planet, and and the, to top it all off, it says, "Do not let the population go above what is it, five hundred million." Oh yeah, they want three fourths of the population wiped out, and you know, so exactly. it'll, it'll be the elites and and whoever they decide to keep around to be their little slaves. But uh, and uh, have you have you or your listeners heard about the chem trails by oh, any chance? Good Lord, heard of them? I live in them. I, they're all over the place here. <laughs> I have a lab report going back to 2006, 2007, that they took samples over in Italy and in Texas, and they had them highly uh, checked into. Uh, I'm, I'm have, being... you, have, you, have, you, have you heard anything called Morgallon's disease? I have, but I'm being yelled at by listeners who want to know. I guess apparently I didn't let you finish. A sack full of what on Common Eleanor? The stuff they've been spraying up there, at least back as as early as 2006, 2007, had all the stuff to create all that. And I have all the images. They're still on the website. Okay. I'll send you a I'll send you a copy of that. A friend of mine who was also a friend of both my wife, my wife, and my myself, who also said he was a remote viewer said, and this was his idea that he saw in remote viewing, that all this stuff being sprayed around was being inhaled by everyone on the planet. And he saw that the harp facilities interacting on certain frequencies would cause those things to interact with our bodies and they would actually have the survivors under their control not my idea not my way of thinking this was a guy he's, I think he's still alive but he was having a hard time at, at the end uh, this was a guy who saw and he wouldn't tell me exactly what would happen or tell my wife but that's what he said would happen. That's why all the coffins were built and buried near the uh, the uh, FEMA camps. I mean, they they ordered and paid for and had built millions upon millions of coffins that can hold two or three people. And they're all buried near the FEMA camps where they can easily be dug up to put bodies in. So they've been, the powers that be, at least here in the United States and possibly Canada, they've been thinking that something truly massive was going to happen, not only here but elsewhere. But all those ideas seem 
seem, appear to have fallen flat in their faces as of 2013. Then we got this Ebola problem. Ebola has never come into this country before. I can't think of ever hearing about it here in this country. And we've seen plenty of nice movies. There was that nice one with Dustin Hoffman a while back called Outbreak with Ebola up there, uh, I guess, in Oregon or Washington or Northern California. Yeah. So this stuff, they've known. That was one of the things I've, I've known for a while is that, yes, the powers that be knew that we would probably freak out, just like in War of the Worlds back in, what, 1938, 39? So they started a program to desensitize edu to educate the people. And this program started off with movies, books, TV shows, other types of stuff. What was one of the big movies back in the mid 1950s? Oh, yo, you got When me, worlds man. collide. When a weird planet comes through our solar system all by itself and it causes all this damage on the earth and the humans have to build rocket ships to fly to that thing because it destroyed the earth. Well, I'll tell you where else I've seen something like this. Uh, uh, Smallville, which is a Superman series that used to run on TV. In the yes. last episode... There was this big red, it looked just like a Planet X, like you see the pictures coming in. And that's when he finally got into his Superman costume and, and got up there and pushed it back out. But uh, it was almost and, like... And a, in the comics, the comics, Scooby-Doo, you've got Velma talking about Planet X, Nibiru, coming into our system pretty soon. Anyone can find that on uh, uh, YouTube. And it's just one of the weirdest things you... Oh, I'm going to look for that. Why are they talking about this? I didn't know she said that. Now i got to see that. <laughs> yeah. And and then Star Trek, the, 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 the brand new Star Treks, the second Star Trek movie, the Starship Enterprise actually goes to Nibiru. Really? Yeah. Now, which, which one is this? Because I want to see that, too. <laughs> That's the second movie. The second. Th this is the early, early Star Trek when when Spock and and Kirk were just like ensigns or something. So I'm quite sure a lot of your listeners know about it. It's the second Star Trek. And they actually uh, say we're heading to Nibiru. The Enterprise goes and sees Nibiru. Holy Christ! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so 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 you've had Hollywood and different stories talking about this to educate the population because if they had sat down back then only a handful would whack them the other ones would all want to lynch them now if they sat down a good number of us would welcome them with very few wanting to lynch them and that's because of all the TV shows and all the books Star Trek, Star Trek Next Generation Star Trek Deep Space Nine Star Trek, uh, um, uh, the other one with with the, yeah, can't think of his name right now. So they, you know, I'm looking at these images on Soho from NASA, and I'm I'm calling that thing just came out of warp. Here's uh, another one was coming directly out of warp. It's firing its main phasers. I have I don't know how many images I have of these things firing these massive beams at something. Okay, so. I've been educated accidentally or directly because of this learning curve that they wanted us to have. Okay, Robert, we are almost out of time. We've got about another minute to go here, so I want to give... That, yes. Oh, wow. we got a lot more to talk about, so we're going to have to have you back. Um, <laughs> but tell people where they could go uh, website-wise, and, and thank you so much for being a guest. I, like I say, we've got to do a part two on this. No problem. It's an honor for me be, even being here to tell your your uh, listeners. Uh, they can go to my webpage, which is starshipsaroundthesun.com, and they can uh, see some of the – there's at least 20 images right there they can actually see, and they can see all the other shows I've been on. Uh, 
I'll have this one up there real soon. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, uh, Robert H. Evans Jr., and I stay right on top of this stuff with other people. Uh, they, they can go back to my uh, history there, all the stuff I post up there, talking about this, this, or that. Um, that that's about as, I'm not too sure about giving out an email. That, 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 I'll leave that to you as your decision. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. If they could get to your website and they want to contact you, are you on Facebook? Yes, I am. Okay, well, then they can contact you on Facebook. And how do they do that? Uh, just a Facebook personal message type thing. 